Has this ever happened to you? You were doing an in the hoop project, you put your placement on the stabilizer and it looked like the stitches were just coming right off. Or maybe you finished your in the hoop project and your seams were so loose, it looked like they were gonna fall right apart. These are tension problems and I'll show you how to fix it for your in the hoop projects on this video. I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard, don't touch the tension on your embroidery machine. Don't touch it, don't touch it, it's bad. It's a trick, don't touch it. The truth is on a high-end machine, you don't have to mess with your tension, hardly ever. Once you've got it working, you just leave it. But on other machines, you do have to manually adjust your tension. It really depends on the type of machine. There's three different kinds of tension that machines have. The more expensive machines have something called metered top thread tension, and that measures the fabric thickness and the thread moving through the machine, and it adjusts the thread for the stitch on the fly, faster than the blink of an eye. It's amazing how these machines can adjust tension for you, and you really don't have to do a lot of adjustment on your own. Other machines have something called auto tension by stitch type. You can hear the tension disc clicking and they change tension based on how long the stitches are or by if it's a satin stitch or running stitch. These do okay, but can use some manual adjustment as well. And then there's the machines that have what's called auto or universal tension. It's a misnomer. There's really nothing automatic about it. Some of them have a tension dial. Some of them have a menu setting. And once you set the tension there, it stays there. The reason they call it universal is because you set your dial at four and just leave it. Because four is okay for running stitches, four is okay for satin stitches, it's just okay. And if you're happy with how the four setting works, then just leave it there. But if you wanna step up your game and get even better results, let me show you how to do that. Now I will say before you mess with your tension, there are some things you wanna be sure you're doing correctly. You wanna make sure that your fabric is hooped properly, make sure your machine is threaded correctly, Go back and unthread it and rethread it if you need to. Make sure that your fabric is stabilized properly and that you're using a good quality thread and a needle that's appropriate for your fabric. Maybe you need to switch the needle to a stretch needle and get better results. Maybe you need to use a size 14 for a heavy fabric instead of a size 11 needle, which is typically what we use for machine embroidery. Also clean out the lint from your bobbin case and make sure there's no stray threads caught down there. That can cause problems. And you also might want to clean out your tension disc to make sure there's no pieces of thread stuck in there. You can use some unflavored dental floss for that, or some people use a pipe cleaner to floss out those tension discs and make sure that they're clean. But if you've already done all of that and you're still having issues with tension, especially within the hoop projects, let's try this. So let's look at some different tension tests that I've run on a couple of machines. The ones in the middle here, my bobbin thread was too tight. And so you can see the puckering here. Let me kind of, if you see the, the sh there you go. You can really see the puckering there. But you see this one down on this corner here doesn't have that puckering because that one had balanced tension. So this is an example of when your tension is too tight and this was the bobbin was too tight because you can't even see the bobbin thread hardly at all. This was, um, you got puckering on the tight tension here. And then after I adjusted it, so all of these are the tight ones, this is the good one. And you can see about one third of white bobbin thread in the middle. And then you see just on this one here, red on the side, red on the side. So it's about one third, one third, one third. And that's what we wanna see. Same over here, about one third gray, one third of the white bobbin and then one third of the gray top thread. There's also, an, uh, this is the eye test because it's just a straight column. Some people also like something called an H test because this tests the uh, a vertical and horizontal, tests both directions of your satin stitch. Some people prefer a Fox test. So you get vertical, horizontal, circular, and you also get the diagonal. So if there's any problems with your machine where it might stitch a beautiful, you know, straight column like this, but it might not do um, a, a circle properly. This was on the, um, the six needle that has the metered thread monitoring system. And you can see um, it looks great on all the letters. We get just a little bit of bobbin thread in the middle like we like it and everything stitch, stitched out really nice. So, so that's what you wanna see is something like this, but that only tests uh, satin stitches. And if you're doing a, a picture of typical machine embroidery, this is a good test to run. And make sure that you get these balanced so that they look good on the front and on the back. And once you've got that, you can do your machine embroidery just fine until you go to do an in the hoop project. 
and you get something like weird, you know, your, your placement stitches have rounded corners or um, you might run into something like your seams, like I showed earlier, how they just, um, wrong side, how they come apart. Like this one just came undone because it just wasn't tight enough. This is a good uh, seam right here, nice and tight. But some of these looser ones, here's a loose one here, you can even see how loose that is. If you stitched a seam like that, I mean, you would be able to see inside of, that's not a good seam at all. That's, that's really bad quality, so you don't want to do that. This one I stitched on a 20-year-old machine, and it's a Viking Husqvarna Designer one. It was a good machine back in its day, I think top of the line back then, but anymore, it just doesn't, it doesn't keep up. Um, I stitched it, this is the 6x10 design. And this is a free tension test that I'll put out on ballyhoocreations.com. So I created this to have a satin stitch. This is a satin. Also, this is a fill. This is a triple stitch, also called a bean stitch. And then these are running stitch X's. And then it has a running stitch all the way around. This is five millimeters. This is a really long stitch in this corner. This corner here is four millimeter, so still pretty long, like a basting stitch or a placement stitch. And then this is a three and this is a two. A lot of times in, in the hoop projects, we'll use a, somewhere between a two and a three for seams because we want it to be tight. And I ran the test several different times. I set my machine tension at two and stitched this one. I set it at three, did this one. Here's a four, five, and then I did 2.8 because that particular machine defaults to 2.8. When I turn the machine on, it stitches like this. And then you can see on the front, these all look okay, other than some of these here are coming out. I think I just didn't anchor my stitches correctly. Um, but you can see some of these on the looser tensions, they're very loose. These would just come right out. But they don't look horrible, except, you know, this part here was actually my hoop was running into something. So not part of the tension problem. You might look at these and go, yeah, they don't look bad. Some of them look a little puckered. Um, down here I got a little puckering on these, you know. But if you look at the back, this is where you can really see the tension problems. Starting with the loosest, which is a tension of two. Look at this. Look at all of these loops on the back. I can just pull that bobbin thread right out. I just did. And those stitches are all gonna come out because the tension was way too loose on the top thread and it was just building up. I'm lucky that this didn't catch on the needle plate and cause a bird's nest because sometimes that will happen. You also can't tell by looking but this one is nice and flat, this fill stitch. This one is really bulky, and like I can feel the difference. It feels thick. We don't want that either. That's way too much thread. The three is better, but I still have a chain stitch problem here. The three does, it's, it's too tight on the satin stitch, and I think this machine is having some issues with the satin stitch and needs an adjustment, but you can still tell how these running stitches are just really bad, especially the long ones. The tighter ones are not as bad they're better. Four, this is a perfectly good, I'd be happy with this, you know, but the corners are still loose. I still have some loose stuff happening here. I had to crank it all the way up to five, which is really pretty tight. Most, a sewing machine typically runs around five, tension of five. That's your typical sewing tension. Embroidery machines are usually somewhere between like two and a half to four over here because you want it to be looser for the satin stitches. But if you're doing in the hoop projects, you also need to pay attention to the running stitches, like these straight lines. These are running stitches, and those are what's forming your seams, so you want them to be tight. This five actually looks good on the fill. Everything looks pretty decent here. And then, again, this is a loose 2.8. This is the machine default, and this is what I would get. So just looking at the front, you might be like, okay, it's not bad. A little bit of puckering, but that's, that's not bad. Um, this is a cheap fabric. I'd be okay with that. But when I look at the back, I see all kinds of problems happening, which could turn quickly into a bird's nest with something like this. Your stitches may come out. So those are problems that you'll have. You may find that you need to set your tension somewhere around the two to three range for your satin stitches. And then for the running stitches, you might be happier at a four or five, somewhere in this range to get a better a seam. And that's what I do on my In The Hoop projects all the time, is when I'm doing the seams, I tighten that tension and get it nice and tight so that my seams you can see how that's a nice tight seam, but on these looser tensions, it's not tight at all. I mean, look at that, that's horrible. So this is what it should like look like 
with these, you know, nice tight all the way around. This machine auto adjusted everything, so everything looks good on this one. But here you really have to know uh, what stitch am I doing, and you have to go and adjust the tension. And on this one, let's see, that's another, the six needle did that, and still, I even tried to mess it up. This is a looser tension, this is a tighter one on that six needle, and that machine is so smart that it just knows how to adjust the tension and make them look the same. Like, even when I tried to change the tension, this one's a little bit tighter on the, uh, sorry, looser, the top thread, you see more top thread. This one you see a little bit more of the bobbin, so this is the one that was, was better. But either one are really good because that machine is smart enough to auto adjust, whereas the older machine, it doesn't. And I, it's up to the user to know how to change your tension setting. Hopefully that clears up tension for you and helps you understand the ins and outs, why some people say don't touch it while others say, yeah, it's okay. There's a lot of different variables involved and hopefully it makes more sense to you now. I could get a lot deeper into tension. I've ordered a tension gauge that should be coming soon and hopefully I'll have another vlog post on how to use that. Meanwhile, I'm still working on updating the website, getting my designs all consolidated. I've got a lot of changes coming. So stay tuned, subscribe to the vlog. I'll have more about machine embroidery for you in future videos.